Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. And thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for your blessing uh, to us through your promises. Help us not only to want your blessings, but to be a blessing to others. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray, amen. Our text for today is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 through chapter 7, verse 1. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 through uh, chapter 7, verse 1. And don't uh, get perturbed. That's only about three verses or so. So here we go. The English Standard Version, verse 17 says, Therefore, go out from um, their midst and be separate from them, says the Lord, and touch no unclean thing. Then I will welcome you, and I will be a father to you, and you shall be sons and daughters to me, saith the Lord Almighty. And verse uh, seven, uh, chapter seven, verse one says, since we have these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from every defilement uh, of body and spirit, bringing holiness to completion in the fear of the Lord. Our topic for today is the promises of God's blessings. The promises of God's blessing. We're still dealing with uh, uh, the series, God Wants to Be With Us. God Wants to Be With Us. And this week we're dealing with the promises of God's blessing, where he promises to be with us. Now, God becomes our father when we trust Jesus Christ as our savior, but he cannot be to us a father unless we obey him and fellowship with him. God longs to receive us in love and treat us as his precious sons and daughters. Salvation means we share the Father's life, but separation means that we uh, enter into the Father's love. Jesus promised this deeper love in John chapter 14, verse 21 through 23. Again, I'm reading the English Standard Version. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Judas, not Issachariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Hallelujah. That's God's word. Now again, we get an indication that God wants to be with us and shows us our part in the process. God blesses those who separate themselves from sin and unto the Lord. Now catch this. This is important. Sin separates us from God. Got it? That's the first part. Sin separates us from God. But Jesus separates us from sin. And if Jesus separates us from sin then sin no longer can separate us from God. No wonder Paul said, what can separate me from the love of God? Now, Abraham separated himself from Ur of the Chaldees, and uh, God blessed him. And when Abraham uh, compromised and went to Egypt, God had to chastise him. As long as Israel 
were separated from the sinful nations in Cana, God blessed them. But when they began to mingle with the heathens, God had to discipline them. Both Ezra and Nehemiah had to teach the people again and again the meaning of separation. Uh, for instance, in chap chapter 9 and 10 of the book of Ezra, uh, Israel started intermarrying with uh, nation, the nations that were around them when God had told them not to. And, 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 and when we do what God says don't do, just like with Adam and Eve, we suffer the consequences. But when we do it, do what he tells us to do, he blesses us. Now, because of God's gracious promises, we have some spiritual responsibilities. Promises do not come without responsibilities contrary to our the way we uh, act. Uh, the message version of 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1 says, with promises like this to pull us on, dear friends, Paul is saying these promises serve the purpose of pulling us on. So let us make a clean break with everything that defiles or distracts us, both within us and without us, on the outside of us. Let's make our entire lives fit and holy temples for the worship of God. Let's pause right there for a second. I want to share something that I read today that, that, that just grabbed my attention. So often we come to, uh, we gather as the born again believers, we, as the church, uh, in the church building, where the church meets, uh, so often to be entertained or to get something. When our sole purpose of corporate worship should be to give something not to each other, but to give praise and to ascribe to God what he's worth to us, to praise him for what he has done for us all week long. And when we do that, that spurs us on to praise him even for what he's going to do next week. I just wanted to share that with you. Now, we must cleanse ourselves once and for all of anything that defiles us. It's not enough to ask God to cleanse us. We must clean, clean up our own lives and get rid of those things that make it easy for us to sin. You know those things that we hold on to, that we act like is not a part of our lives, that we don't, know, we don't want anybody to know about us? those things that make it convenient for us to sin. We need to start working towards cleaning those things up. And the way we clean those things up, it's not hard. Ooh, that hurt. It's not hard, though, because Jesus has already done the work. Our work is to trust in his power to work in and through us. And then we can start getting away rid of stuff that makes it easy for or convenient for us to continue to sin. Should we continue in sin that grace might more abound? No. No believer can legislate for any other believer. Each one knows the problems of his own heart and life, or her own heart and life. Since Jesus has set me free of sin, now I have the choice to walk away from those things that used to grab me and hold on to me tight with a tight grip 
as it were. I can walk away. Too often Christians deal with symptoms and not causes. We keep confessing the same sins because we have not gotten to the root of the trouble and cleansed ourselves or walked away from them. Perhaps there's a filthiness of the flesh, some pet sin that feeds the old nature. Here's what Paul says in Romans chapter 13, verse 14, the Living Bible Version. He says, but ask the Lord Jesus Christ to help you to live as you should. And we have not because we ask not. And don't make plans to enjoy evil. Ooh. I, I feel like I'm, I'm really worshiping right now because God's word is helping me to praise him and to thank him for what he has done, is doing, and I'm anticipating what he's going to do. Again, verse 14 says, Ask the Lord Jesus Christ to help you to live as you should. And don't make plans to enjoy evil. Or it may be filthiness of the spirit, an attitude that is sinful. We need to put, lay aside some of the attitudes that we have. The prodigal son was guilty of sin of the flesh, but his moral elder brother was guilty of sin of the spirit. He could not even get along with his own father. His attitude was kicked to the curb. Not only could he not, did he not uh, want to be around his younger brother, he despised his younger brother, but he couldn't get along with his father. His father couldn't get him to, to come in to a celebration for his son. But cleaning, cleaning ourselves is only half of the responsibility. We must also be perfecting holiness in fear of God. We must also be perfecting holiness in the fear of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, the NIV version said, Since we have these promises, dear friends, and I read this a few minutes ago in another version, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting out of reverence for God, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. I think I need to read that again. Since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting holiness out of reverence for God. This is a constant process as we grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In other words, it's important to be balanced to live balanced lives. The Pharisees were keen on putting away sin, but they, they neglected the perfect holiness or they, they neglected to perfect holiness. But it's foolish to try to perfect holiness if there is no, if, if, if uh, there is known sin in our lives. Mm. Paul had appealed to, for the appreciation and for the separation of the believers. And here, here's the application of what we've learned today. God gave his son to pay the price for our sin. His son gave his life. Yes, he died on a Friday on an old rugged cross. They buried him in a borrowed tomb, and early the third day morning, he rose from the dead. He rose with all power in heaven and in earth in his hand. 
Jesus rose because he died for our sins and even all of us and all of our sins were stripped off of, of, of our sin. All of our sins were stripped of its power. And if Jesus could rise from death, even though all of our sins were heaped upon him at one time, if he could rise from death, we can rise from that which used to have us bound, but no longer has any power to hold us. And therefore, we are free to rise because it has no more power over us. And knowing this truth, it opens the path for us to obey God so that he can be to us a father because we obey him and fellowship with him. That's it for today. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the freedom to obey and fellowship with you as a way to demonstrate that to you and that you are in us and we are in you. Thank you for wanting to be with us and helping us to want to be with you. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. And all of the church say it. Amen. Thank you very much. Okay, that's it for this week. Thank you so much for joining us. I pray that God will bless you for giving your time and, and efforts. Uh, continue to be careful. Um, I think about 50% of the United States have had, had at least one uh, vaccination shot, vaccine shot, uh, that still leaves a lot. So let's be careful. And with that, we'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.